to help you figure out what you need to pack. I've gathered everything you, your partner and the baby might need whilst you're in labour and staying in hospital afterwards. We recommend packing your bag in advance, say early third trimester, maybe weeks 32 to 36. That way, if you do go into labour a little bit early, you're not caught on the hop. There is a lot, but don't worry, you could always go to Mumsnet's article or check the description below and we've got a printable list so you can tick off as you go. Choose your bag wisely. There isn't loads of space in hospital for big suitcases, but you do have a lot of stuff you need to take for you, your birth partner and your baby. Other than that, try to pack things in an organized way if you can. Anything you're going to need in labor, you're gonna want on top of the bag or certainly that's easy to reach because you don't wanna be rifling around through all your birth partner's clothes trying to find your TENS machine. You're going to want your birth plan somewhere super easy to get hold of because it's gonna be the first thing your midwife asks for when you arrive at hospital. Clothes for you for after you've given birth you're going to want comfy, loose-fitting clothes and probably something you can put over you to keep warm. Something like this dress, which has little unhookable straps, making it easy to nurse whilst on the ward with maybe a little bit more modesty. Nursing and maternity bras. Again, like the dress earlier, these have unclippable straps which make breastfeeding that bit more comfortable. Pants. We'd recommend big ones and something that you don't mind if it gets a bit ruined because birth is a little bit messy. Alternatively, in pharmacies up and down the UK you can also buy disposable pants. I would buy these in a size bigger than you're expecting. Slippers. Definitely choose ones that are backless so that they're easy just to slip on and off, but also so that you're not walking around the hospital in full on shoes. Or the other option is flip flops. I liked these for in the shower at hospital, but they can also double up as slippers if you're short on space in your case. A nighty, something comfy, hospital gowns aren't great. And I would definitely recommend a dressing gown. Sometimes it's just easier to have something that you can wrap around yourself and undo really easily and not have to worry about clothes. We'd recommend one change of clothes for your birth partner, including a pair of pants and a pair of socks. We'd also recommend something they don't mind getting messy. And if you're going to be in a birth pool, don't forget their swimsuit so they feel like they can get in the pool with you and help out. Also, if you have long hair, make sure you have a way to tie it back. You might want your hairbrush, but also a headband that's gonna keep all your hair away from your face during labor. It can feel really nice. Nipple cream. I didn't actually take this when I went into hospital and I did regret it. Even if you're breastfeeding really, really well, it's just a sensation you're not really used to. And this can just take the edge off a little bit whilst you're getting to grips with it. A washcloth as well can just help you feel a little bit more refreshed. I would really recommend taking a water bottle with you into the hospital. This is great to help you stay hydrated during labour, but once baby has arrived, especially if you've had an epidural or a c-section, you don't want to be up and down, up and down, getting little paper cups of water whenever you're thirsty. I would also recommend trying to get one with a sports spout, which means that if you are lying down, it's not going to go all over you. If you don't have one, a straw will do the same trick. Breast pads. These are cotton little pads that just slip into your bra to absorb any leakage that might happen whilst you're breastfeeding. We would recommend packing a whole box. You might not need them, but at least you've got them if you need them. Maternity pads. These are absolutely essential, but we would actually recommend only taking one pack to start off. If you run out, the hospital can provide you with some whilst your birth partner or friend or family arrives at the hospital with more. Definitely make sure you pick up maternity pads and not sanitary pads, as these tend to be a bit more absorbent. Don't forget a towel, because you are definitely going to want a shower. And if you are planning on using a TENS machine, 
make sure that's at the top of your suitcase or in a front pocket that's easy to access. This is something you're gonna want as soon as you arrive in hospital. Don't forget to pack your headphones. Whether it's podcasts, your hypnobirthing CDs, or a playlist you've made specially for the occasion, you're gonna to want to be able to listen. If you can, make sure they're cordless so that you're not faffing with cables whilst also trying to manage contractions. It just makes everything easier. And finally, change for the parking at hospital. The last thing you want is you having to struggle in on your own because your partner is having to fumble around in the car looking under the seats for those long lost 50p's. Some things that aren't gonna fit in a suitcase are your birthing ball. If you're taking a birth ball with you, don't forget to blow it up before you go to hospital. They often don't have pumps available and you also just don't want that hassle whilst going into labor. If you want to, you can also take your own pillow. Hospital pillows can be a bit thin and a bit rubbish, not very supportive. So whether it's when you're in labor or just starting to breastfeed your new baby, your own pillow can make you feel right at home. You could also grab a breastfeeding pillow. They come in all shapes and sizes. Check out the Mums Net Best to find out which ones we would recommend. But this one would fit around you like this. And when you're exhausted after just giving birth and trying to learn to nurse your baby, it can just support you a little bit more and make sure everyone's comfortable. What you need for baby. For someone so small, they need a surprising amount of things. As with you and your birth partner, I'd recommend packing for just the first 24 to 48 hours that you're going to be in hospital. So with that in mind, a towel in case baby needs a bath, one pack of newborn size one nappies, Water wipes are also a really good idea and handy to have at your disposal. But with a newborn, you're actually more likely to use cotton balls or cotton pads with warm water on their oh so delicate newborn skin. A few nappy sacks are also handy. You're going to want about three long sleeved, long legged baby grows for your newborn. Look how tiny they are. Layers are key for newborns. With that in mind, don't forget a cardigan of some kind. You're also gonna to want a blanket though, because again, layers, but also when you're heading home, this can be really nice to just tuck them in, make them snug in the car seat or the buggy, depending how you're getting home. And of course, you're going to want something to take them home in to make it feel like the real occasion it is. And I do particularly like this. Having a little cotton cap is a really good idea just to help baby feel a little bit more cozy, keep the heat in as well. Little booties or socks are a great way to do that too, especially if the baby grows you have don't have feet attached to them. And muslins. These are a parent's lifesaver. You can get them in a variety of sizes. These ones are huge, but they do also come in more of a handkerchief size as well. These mop up sick, they mop up milk, they mop up everything you might possibly need. I can't recommend them enough. Top tip, you just can't have enough. Don't forget the snacks, the important bit. Cereal bars, little bags of popcorn, dried goods that are gonna last a few days. The cafeteria isn't always open, so whether it's energy during labor or you're just peckish with your newborn, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got snacks to hand when you want them. Something that you can eat one-handed is really recommended. room to spare. You also need a way to get baby home. In the UK, it's actually illegal to take a baby in a car without a car seat. So whether you're going in your own car or a taxi, we would recommend taking the car seat with you to the hospital when you go into labor, so that as with everything else, you've just got it there already and you don't have to worry. Mm. 
You're going to want a newborn car seat like this one, which has the extra padding and is really snug for them in those first few days. And if you're not sure which one is right for you yet, why not head over to mumsnet.com forward slash reviews and look at the latest car seat recommendations and who's won Mumsnet best this year. You can actually buy gift bundles and hampers for things that you might need while you're in hospital giving birth. It doesn't have everything you need, but it will certainly get you started and it can make a really nice gift for somebody who's about to head into hospital to have their first baby. So there you have it. Everything you could possibly need for your stay in hospital when you're giving birth. One bag for you and your birth partner, one bag for baby. Otherwise, I hope this video was helpful and don't forget to like and subscribe to Mumsnet so you can get more tips and tricks videos about your pregnancy and parenthood. Go on. Like it. <laughs>